Hey, what's up YouTube? Sorry I haven't posted in a while. Uh, I've been pretty busy with the uh, jobs coming back after COVID. Uh, that being said, so I'm making a really short video today just to answer some of the questions that I got in the comments. Uh, one of them was uh, about the video I made, Sony ZV-E1 now with 120 FPS and 240 FPS capacity. Uh, somebody asked, how exactly do you do that in the settings? And the other one was uh, a bunch of questions that I, I thought would be you know, better to just address in a video regarding Sony ZV-E1 does not overheat, parentheses, at least not for me. Um, so starting with the 120 FPS and 240 FPS settings. Well, the first thing you got to do is make sure that your firmware is upgraded. Um, for some reason, Sony doesn't call it a firmware. They call it a license for this one. I don't know why. Go to, so go to Sony's website and, oh damn, I'm shooting on the ZV-E one, so I can't check the number, but it it says on the web page you need to install this license to unlock the 240 fps and that being said um so how exactly do you do that um if you could just take a look at this video that i shot with my iphone um this is the obvious first of all you got to put the camera in snq mode in snq mode uh slow motion time lapse it's already baked in to the video file itself that's being recorded so you don't have to go to the timeline and fiddle with uh, the uh, timeline FPS versus the actual shot FPS all that kind of stuff you shoot in SNQ mode what you, and you get a time lapse or you get a slow mo I think the confusing part is regarding the settings so if you could look at the settings that I have here, go to the settings and you go to the camera icon and you'll see image recording quality at the top. You go to SNQ settings in there. Oh, first let's check the file format. Um, you can either do 4K, HS4K, which will limit you to 120 FPS or you can do HD to do 240. Here we're at 4K, we go to SNQ record settings. I'm just gonna choose 100, the highest bit rate, and then frame rate. This is the important part. So on the left, the SNQ rec frame rate, that's the base frame rate, what your timeline is gonna be. You're gonna play back at 24, and the SNQ frame rate on the right, that's how many frames per second you're shooting at. So if you shoot at like 120 and play back at 24, that's five times slow motion. If you wanna to go to 240, you're gonna to have to go back to the menu settings and in 4K cannot do 240, understandably. So we're gonna change the codec to XAVC S H D. We'll go to the S and Q settings, and we'll keep it at twenty-four. But now we'll see that we have the option of two hundred forty FPS, which is ten times slow motion. Yeah, I'll have uh, him be my little guinea pig to test a drop, and here's what it looks like.
let me now move on to the ZVE1 overheating. You know, I still stand by, it's been months since I've posted that video and I still stand by my claims. I have not have had an overheat. Um, I'm just looking at the comments section right now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, which camera to keep or buy? That is totally subjective. There's a few questions of that sort, but I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I did notice, yes, I see a lot of people saying that both the uh, A7 IV and the ZV-E1 both overheat more frequently when used in webcam mode and I recently had that experience with the A7 IV. I haven't tried it with the ZV-E1 but I assume if the A7 IV it overheated in like 30 minutes I'm pretty sure the ZV-E1 will overheat too. Yeah, the webcam, I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, I guess it seems to be using a lot of processing power to get that video through the USB cable. And I guess I don't have much anything much meaningful to say except for I don't know why some people are having these mad overheating issues and some people including me are not having them at all sony if is there some kind of conspiracy going on like you know there's a good batch and a bad batch and you just decided to sell them all and the lucky people got the ones that don't overheat and the unlucky people ones got the ones that overheat when they're claimed to just scrolling through the menu uh i don't know about the experience of others but I can scroll as long as I want in the menu and this camera does not overheat um, indoors without airflow. And as you can see in the video that I posted, I'm out in the sun. I also took it to Jakarta and it has yet to overheat except for one time where I was with something stupid. But anyway, uh, that's it. Um, guys, sorry I haven't posted for a while. Um, once things kind of calm down at work, I will, uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. <laughs> I got like so much equipment that I want to show everyone. Uh, so see you the next time. Bye.